Welcome to the garage. So I went out last week, um, did a bit of a intro for a video. I was going for some um, small eye rays, but nothing made an appearance. One little tiny dogfish, and I didn't really want to put a 15 minute video up with the dogfish, I suppose reality of fishing. Um, I was out for about six hours. Um, tide was quite small, but I've had them on the same size tide before at a similar time of year, but no joy. So tonight, or today, originally I had plans for chesel, so I had 11 black, 11 wraps of black lugs, fresh live ones, um, and three wraps of frozen blacks, but unfortunately the guy that does the digging for the blacks um, didn't get enough to do the 11 wraps, so I won't be going chesel. So I thought, ah, I know, I'll go up the channel, go for a form back or a smooth out, because there's still about this time of year, weather's been quite nice. Just a bit of a easterly, northeasterly blow. I thought, oh yeah, I'll go up the channel and um, get a fawny or a smooth out. So I'm still fishing for the club comp. I still need a weigher for the month. Um, currently, me and Phil are doing quite well, so I'd like to maintain that position. However, low tide today, there is a thunderstorm warning uh, for four hours. Literally, get to fish five, six hours on the mark. I didn't really fancy standing up in the channel on an exposed reef for two 13 and a half foot carbon sticks on a metal tripod. So I thought I better not. So I'm just going to go local off a rock mark. Um, it's a massive tide. I think it's nearly six meters. So it's probably the biggest tide we've had all year. Um, at the minute, it's still gusting really strong outside, easterly, northeasterly, which will be in your face where I'm going. However, tonight it's due to drop away. I think it drops to about 15. Um, I guess it's miles per hour. I'm not sure it's either miles per hour or knots per hour, but it drops away. So you're looking at 40, 50 gusts at the minute, and it drops to 15 for high, which should be good. It's just the size of the tide that's a problem. So when the wind drops, I'll be packed ready, and I'm going to go armed for every occasion. So I'm going to take a float for a mackerel or a garfish, and take some feathers. I'll have to adapt these, because obviously club rules state I can't have four on there, so I'll chop a couple off. That's fine. So... I'll go for a macro on a gar on the other rod and take a sole rig. Not that you get sole, just to do a bit of scratching. So that's got a little size, little size two on there. If I put my finger behind, you can probably see. Tiny little look. That's just a two at clip down what I'd use on chisel. With your little splash down on the bottom there. So I'll take a couple of them. I'm going to take a wrap of frozen blacks just to see if there's any little fish or big little fish out there that's going to have a blast on that. And then the rest of it is going to be pulleys. Boink. Um, I'll show you my rig selection in a minute. I've got quite a lot. Um, so bait-wise, I'm going to take squid. I've got uh, sardines. I've got herring. I've got bluey. I've got mackerel. I've got sand eel. I've got peeler crab. So it's probably going to be quite a lengthy session. Um, but hopefully some fish come out to play. In terms of reelage for the float, I've got the old BG. It's four and a half thousand, 40 pound braid. Um, I'll just bang a float out, see how that goes. If the float don't do very well, then I will go on to the feathers. In terms of rods, I'll take the graphic sports and then for the float fishing, I've got a Century Ultralight GT. I'll just give you a tour of the rod selection. Um, I've got rigs coming out of my ear, so I just thought I'd pack up, do my little intro. At the same time, I'm packing the box reels. Got the Fathom Casting Specials, 20 pound. Um, what is it? Veravast Sport Yellow. Um, it's just good for night. So in terms of riggage, here we go. So in here, this side, I have got up and overs. This one, I've got two at clip downs, up and overs, pulleys, pulleys. Uh, what have I got in there? They're bream rigs for the uh, rock mark down on Portland. In this one. Bear with me. I have got more beach rigs, more sole rigs. Obviously, you can see the little beads on there. Mainly clip downs again. Variations of clip downs. This one, I've got more. So I've got pop ups, I've got clip downs. You name it, I've got it in there. This one, I've got flounder rigs. This one, I've got wire traces for spare and tote. This one, flounder rigs. And then I've got a bucket full of tote rigs in there. And the Congreal rigs, literally. Get to the bottom, I'll pull them all out. 
loads of them, hundreds of them. Boink. Uh, and then if I come down here, I've got another bag full of rigs here as well. I can rig them there, look. It's easy to bag no bar rigs. See them in there, little tiny hooks again. Use them on chisel, they're all right, not too bad. And then Rob Rice got the old M4s. They'll be staying at home tonight. Ultralights, estuary rods, sports. Tucked away right in the corners of mullet and gear. And then a couple of tripods. So I'll um, I'll try a bit of everything. Try float, try feather. I'll try everything today just to get that fish in. Um, I'll see if I can find a tree, see how gusty it is outside. You won't be able to hear it because I've got the wind thing on. But you can probably see the trees up there giving it tits so hopefully when that wind drops away I'll be uh, departing in the car and uh, off to catch some fishies hopefully I just realised the camera makes me look fat anywho right let's get this box pack ready to go and then I'll uh, let you know how I get on when I get down there alright so here we are on the spot so originally I had um, a light rod with a spinning reel float and some feathers etc. Bin that off. So I looked at the uh, seat from the car park and decided that there probably ain't going to be many mackerel around in this colour water. Um, so they're not leaving the car. Um, rig wise, panel pulley, pair of 4 mount are extras there. And then just obviously you swivel at the top bead and then your main swivel onto your snood got the old uh, tip tornado graphic sport casting special 20 pound line bear with me while I put this back all right so obviously this is plan B so with plan B I've got mackerels Squidicles, pilchards, and when I say I've got bait, that is chocolate with bait. Um, all I'm going to do, I've got some black lug as well. I'm just going to fire out fish baits and squid baits for now. You can get a multitude of species down here, so you can get your small eyed ray, spotted ray, bullus. Um, nice summer's day, you can get smooth and wrasse and all that sort of good stuff. Um, so hopefully it should be all right. We're bottom of a low at the minute. I wanted to get here low, low and just see what the ground was like, see what I'm fishing on. Um, it looks quite weedy at the minute. Um, so I'm probably just gonna have to sit on my hands and eat my lunch while I wait for the tide to push in a bit. It's a big old tide, so I think it's a 5.7, which for us in Devon's a fucking monster tide. Um, if you can see, hold on, the color of the water in that, it is like, I don't know, what colour would you call that? It's not quite a cup of tea, but it's definitely a milky brown. Um, so it's certainly a good colour. So basically what normally happens is I get here really early, get all excited, think I'm going to fucking bag up a load of fish and I'll sit here for about eight hours catching fuck all. Maybe I might see a dog or a rocklin. Um, and then later on, hopefully as the tide comes over, it's normally about two hours after I it'll it'll fish its best so hopefully by then it should kick off um, I'll get baited up get the rods out and then hope for some fish I'll probably eat my lunch first and go from there the one thing I want to cover off is when you're fishing rocks um, you'll see a lot of anglers on YouTube and all that fishing off of rocks um, and a lot of them cover off safety so I thought I'd do my little bit so if someone falls down here and dies then it's they should have watched these fucking two minutes on YouTube to potentially help them so trousers I've got rab, so I don't know if you can see that, they're stretchy, but they're quite tight. So tight and stretchy. Reason being, if you go in somewhere like, um, oh, I don't know where to say, somewhere where you're walking through bush. So like, I don't know, Sterile Bay, for example. I'm not a Sterile Bay. But if you're at Sterile Bay, or somewhere like um, Start Point, um, where else you got? There's a few there's a few marks around that are similar to that but i don't want to reel off a load of names because people get shitty you can pick up ticks i am the fucking tick king 
So off start point, I reckon I've had five. Um, I've had them out of sterile and I'll get them like on my chest, in the armpit, on my ankles, on my wrists. So I wear tight trousers that are quite smooth like these so the little bastards can't get in. With that, the other bit would be boots. I'll try and do this with one foot. I don't know if you can see the grip on them. It's covered in shit, which I've just put my fingers in. Fucking brilliant. Look, boots up there. Let me just wash that shit off. They're not a nice to have really for rock fishing. They're like a need to have. You need to have good boots. Now, if I was to recommend boots, and I, I reckon I, I know a bit about boots. Um, so I was ex-military, I was in the army for a bit, wherever the army goes, pong goes with it and all that shit. Better than the RF and the Navy though, noted. Um, I'd say something like a uh, handwag, very expensive, quite a heavy boot. If you get them in Gore-Tex, they're really warm and really waterproof, good for winter months, but they're heavy. Um, you can get lowers, you can get the lower mountain, lower patrol and lower urbans, all decent. The only thing with that might be um, the eyelets can rust, they have like D's. You get a bit of salt on them and don't clean them off, they'll rust and they'll pop out the leather. But again, very warm, very rugged boot. My favourite is the Altberg Sneaker. They're lightweight, you can get them in Gore-Tex, they're waterproof. So if you go into the water up to your ankle, you're not getting a wet foot. Um, they're warm, they're really light, they are the fucking pinnacle of boot. You can get stuff like um, Adidas GS G9s, which Special Forces use, but they're more like a trainer. So if you're going somewhere rugged, they're more for urban, do you know what I mean? Fucking running through a house and kicking in a door or something. But if you come in somewhere, you've got to do a bit of shit climb. I probably wouldn't wear GS G9s, and they're very expensive. If you want a bargain, and this is what I'm wearing now, it's jungle boots. So they're probably 40 quid, Get the one without the metal plate in the sole because they're uncomfortable. These ones haven't got the metal plate in, so they twist. But they're built with a tr like the grip on them is insane. If you can see, it is literally like a tractor tire, and it'll give you grip on any sort of shit. Grip on the rocks, grip on the trek down, all of it. So if I was to say a cheap boot, it's a jungle boot. Probably not ideal in the winter because they're really thin. So if you look at the ankle piece on these goes from there up that's just like a nylon coating it's literally just weave nylon so you, that goes in the water your foot's getting fucking wet um and they won't really keep you that wet in the winter so that's when you want your altbergs um but you can wear jungle boots all summer long in the altbergs through the winter i've got altbergs now and i've had three pairs of altbergs in the last 10 to 15 years so yeah they're 150 quid 180 quid but they'll fucking last years that's it for your safety stuff um, the only other thing I've got is a nice Berg house. I think it's the Storm 2 or Deluge 2 coat. 140 quid. Um, but fuck me. When it pisses down, it's nice to have that. But that's it. That's it for my safety stuff. I'm going to eat my lunch, have a little drink, and then start fishing. And hopefully, I'll show you some fishing a bit. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Look, I'm not going to show you how to bait up because everybody knows how to stick a hook for a bit of squid and whip it on. But unless she blows, two four O's. When it gets a bit softer, I'll probably do a bit better. But the bait's only been out of the uh, the freezer for an hour and a half or so, however long it's taken me to to drive here and walk down. So maybe two hours now. Driven quite far. Um, that's bait number one. So hopefully that goes out and um, avoids first cast curse. Basically, where your bait goes out, you catch decent fish, and then you spend ten hours out catch a shit all so first bait out hopefully something comes along and takes a liking tides well on now went in for a push um i haven't had any lunch i've literally just baited up and it's probably come in 10 meters well maybe not 10 meters but in terms of gr flat ground it's it's covered a hell of a chunk um maybe the length of a rod i suppose but it's just washing over the top now anyway stop talking shit get my bait out let's do it again bait number two Nice little pilchard. Pair of 4 skewer mount of extras on there. Let's see what happens. Um, I'll continue to keep my waffling down, but I'm just trying to share some bits. A lot of people spend 400 quid, 500 quid, 600 quid on fucking fishing rods, a couple of hundred quid on reels, um, and then they'll go and buy some crappy ass hooks, like some fladdens, do you know what I mean? 
if you spend that much on your rod and reel that the fish don't know you got, why are you spending a quid on the bit that actually connects to the fish? Just have a think about that. Because <clears throat> I know there's probably people watching this with a flat and hook and a Century or Ziplex rod. And then obviously I've got my 70 pound tracer, just in case something with small teeth come along like a hus or whatever, dogfish will rinse that after a couple and just shred it. Anyway, next bait's going out. Hopefully some big fishy comes along and eats it. I'll keep you posted. I had a belter of a bite. Thought, bloody hell, this is a big fish. Boom. So that's a hus, as you can tell by the nasal flaps there. Whereas the dogfish there be flat, so if you hold it that way, you can see them just pointing up. It's probably not much bigger than a dog, it's probably three pound, give or take. That's the first cast curse right there. But gave a very good account for itself for such a, a smaller fish, but stunning. Very dark. But if we're over slack water now and I've got one. I'm holding good hopes for um, mummy or daddy coming out later. Give him a kiss and let him go. Keep you posted how we get on. Second cast, bunk, little doggy though. Small. Took half a, oh no, it took a whole pilchard. Perfect in miniature. It might be a pesty fish, but you have to admit, if you came here on holiday from another country and caught a miniature shark, you'd be buzzing. Let's hope something bigger comes along. Anyway, can't complain. Two chucks, two fish. And both gave uh, quite a good account for himself. Almost thought as a bass. But the water's really churned, well oxygenated. So I'd imagine we're probably on for a fairly eventful session. Two casts, two fish. Let's hope it stays like that. Fingers crossed. To keep you posted how we get on. Doggy number three, tail it. Okay. Right. <laughs> Took a sardine down. I'll uh, give him away, see what he goes, get him back, and then hope for something bigger. Back. Couple of dogfish down, had a nice snag earlier. And um, while well, I was yoinking said snag, I could see Phil's rod bobbing about. Got another snag now. And he's reading this, he's like, oh, I've got a hus, got a hus. Pulls it in. He had a dogfish on with his, obviously, rig and lead. And then he reeled mine in. Got my lead, my rig, and a nice strap eel. Glorious. I'll uh, get this one back. So hopefully, still waiting on a big one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna rename this place Fishing with Phil. So I had a few bites, a few dogfish. Um, just put a crab out for a smooth arm, just in case. But obviously, I'm fishing with Phil. And there he is. Can get a good foot in. It's Phil's fish there. What was it? £10.8? £10.8. £10. Stunning. It was on a fishing squid wrap. Up and over, weren't you? Up and over you used, didn't you? Brig. Up, up and over. Yeah. A pair of six O's. A pair of six O's on an up and over. There it is. Stunning fish. Well done, Phil. Hopefully, I'll get one. Let's see. There you go. So, still on the flood. But these are out in force. So I had one tangle with Phil's rig and destroyed both rigs. And then not long after I had another one. So eel time. Um, at the minute we're on the flood. Oh, turn that off, just point out. On the flood. Um, but it's slowed right down, so we're not far behind now. The eel should bugger off as it uh, starts backing back out. So fingers crossed something turns up. Old Joey's on now, so we're going big or going home. Got loads of bait still left to get through, so might as well go big. I'll uh, keep you posted how we get on. Yeah, that one big. 
I thought it was you doing it. So a few hours, well I say a few hours, must be nearly 12 hours in, nearly home time. Uh, you can hear Phil's ratchet in the background, it's just had a line screener. Had about a million dogfish, quite a lot of pass the same sort of size as dogfish. I've got, got a bite. Anyway, loads of dogfish. We were watching the rod. It was giving it slack and jiggle, jiggle, and slack and jiggle, jiggle. I'm just putting this in the rod tip while I'm doing this. That'll do. Anyway, watching the rod go jig, jig, jig. A bit slack, jig, jig, jig. We'll leave it just to make sure it gets it down. So I had a hus, which I dropped. You can hear it slapping, just grabbing. Um, about a seven pound us. Lucky for this one, it's coming in for tea. And that's Billy Bass. Not, not massive, I could hold him. He's slippery. There he is. Not a monster by any means, but it's certainly big enough. Can't complain. The tide is hoofing now. You in? So hopefully it kicks off now, but we are about last cast, so it's gonna be one of them. See what happens. But bass, a little bass odor for me. A couple of dogs, well, a couple of dogs, I mean loads of dogs. And fills us. Not a bad night. It's been very busy, just mainly dogs. I'll uh, finish this cast, see if I catch anything big. Keep you posted. Fingers crossed. Recording. That's it, done. Nice last cast fish. Nice us there. It's five and a half. Five and a half pounder. She straightens out. Yeah. Can't complain. Not as big as Phil's. But nice fish nonetheless. Uh, yeah, busy session. Loads of dogs, uh, loads of huss, all around sort of three, four. I was obviously Phil fishing with Phil's monster. Um, loads of strap eels. And we had the bass. Phil had a screaming run, but didn't hook into anything. Just had a snag, and then that was it. Anyway, let's get this fish back. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>